you can dance. Dance to the beat. Dance to the beat. Welcome back for another episode of The Beat. Today we have one of the shining lights out of Victoria over the last few years, Laura King. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. You've had a very busy few weeks lately. Couple it's been very of busy, yeah, and it's going to be busy for the rest of the time, for the rest of January. Um, then maybe a little break in February and then um, I feel like just still coming out of COVID, I'm ready for like busyness. I'm happy for it to be busy. You recently played at some pretty big gigs. You played at Beyond the Valley. You were recently supporting Charlotte the Wit. How was that? It was really cool. Yeah. Um, I was really nervous for BTV. Um I was freaking out. It's like, is it going to go well? Because they gave me a pretty good slot. Very good slot. Playing for X Club, like kind of starting the techno off for the night. Um, but, yeah, I always get freaked out and then I'm up there. I'm like, it's just kind of muscle memory at yeah. that point. <laughs> so you're usually a pretty nervous person, you reckon, before your gigs? Yeah. yeah. What do well, you- not always, but because I do have breaks in between, like I'm not playing every weekend these days. So, like, that kind of just gives me that time to kind of, Think about think it. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. Whereas where, where you're playing all the time, you're just on a roll and you're just constantly yeah. feeling good and confident. Yeah. But, yeah, when you have those little breaks, it kind of freaks me out. But What do you do to, like, keep like, the nerves away? Is there any particular routine or anything you do? Um, I've just found that, like, you can't stop them. So you just have to feel them and just be – like, I'm not good to be around before a gig. Like, <laughs> before a big gig, I'm just, like, really on edge and everything frustrates me couple of drinks to settle the nerves? Yeah, I have a couple of drinks like before I play and then I'll have a drink when I'm up there, which I literally have two sips of because I'm just so busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I have these grand plans, like have all these nice drinks and I literally don't, all my friends just drink it. Take your riders home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, you guys can keep it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, once once I'm up there, like the first couple of tracks, I'm just so, my mind's so in, invested in it that you haven't got time to be nervous. Yeah. And then after it, you just feel so good, like. The feeling I get after I play is just the best feeling. Especially when you smashed it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Not not a good feeling when when it doesn't go well. (laughs) I don't think you have too many there. No, yeah, it goes pretty well. So we'll take it back right to the start. We know you've been DJing since, is it 2016 you sort of get into clubs? Yeah. So I started playing when I was 23, like just in my bedroom. Um, And then I think my first club gig would have been, yeah, probably 2016. I used to bring my laptop because I was so, like, nervous and I used to have every song. Like, I didn't realise at that point you could sort them in record box. Like, oh, I don't know true. what I was doing. Yeah. I was just literally just winging it. Just winging it. I had no help. Like, I didn't know. Um, so I used to bring my laptop, open up my laptop, have my iTunes open so I could see, like, which song I had to play after the other. And in my <laughs> notes I'd write down the time I'd have to bring in that next oh, song because oh, I was yeah. like, it has to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was learning, like, on the go. Like, I reckon sure. I played for a month and then... And then you're straight into straight it. Straight into it. Wow, that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely special. thrown the deep end. Especially going from like playing on a controller at home to then you're going on CDJs. I know the first time I played on CDJs. Oh, well, I had oh, CDJs shit. at home. Oh, but true. they weren't the club stand ones. They were like 350s. They true. had like the screen looked like a Nokia. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's nightmare fuel. So yeah. um, have you had any like musical experience growing up? Um, yep. Yeah. So I trained in classical piano growing uh, up. That must be helpful. What's that? that must be helpful with music. Yeah, oh, and yeah. Stuff. So much. Yeah. Oh, it's so helpful when it comes to like. So I was a singer and I still am a singer. And, um, and yeah, I play classical piano so I can read music a little bit. I'm not, I'm pretty rusty now, but it definitely helps when it comes to production. Like, I'm very, can very easily write a melody and like, you know, do a top line or sing or whatever. But when it comes to like drums and rhythm, I'm not great, but I'm getting there. Melodies is your strong point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That'd be so helpful. Yeah. It is, but it's like with techno there aren't yeah, like heaps yeah. of melodies, but I guess that's where I can add my like, own flavour own flavour and like for it to be unique. So Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And then so you've gone from starting in that small club. Yeah. So where, where did it progress from there? Um, I reckon I was playing there like every weekend for maybe it feels like maybe a year. Like the graveyard shift, like the sun's coming up, like oh. all the weirdos coming <laughs> out. <laughs> the freaks coming out. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, got fifty bucks a set. But I just loved it. I just knew that I didn't know what I was working towards at that point, but I just knew that I had to keep doing it if I wanted to be noticed slash get the experience and build up my skills. Um, And then, yeah, just from there, like, I guess they had other international, not internationals, but like other bigger 
um, local DJs like Melbourne DJs come and play there. So I guess they would see me or someone would hear something and then it just kind of trickles on and I ended up getting, I think my first Melbourne gig was at Circus. So yeah, it's like a, it's a small, smallish club, but it's like one of the best, like it's got definitely one of the best sound systems in Melbourne, I believe. Um, so that was fun. Like had all my friends come and play my first gig and yeah, I guess it just kind of snowballs from there. And I was saying yes to everything though. Like I was playing disco sets. I was playing like house, techno, like deep tech, everything, like just any set. I'd be like, yep, I'll play. Like one time I played a Christmas carols set. No way. (laughs) I'm not joking you. Have you still got those tracks on the USB? (laughs) Yeah, just in case. (laughs) How long was that going for? That set, a few carols? (laughs) It was an hour set. It was hard mixing Christmas carols. Yeah. (laughs) I was hardly mixing. I don't know what I was doing. Press and play. Just like Spotify. looping it up and fading it in and out. What tracks did you have on there, like Mariah Carey and stuff? Oh, I don't even know. I just think I downloaded off iTunes like top 100 Christmas carols. songs of all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yarn and a half. I know. I can't believe I did that. But, yeah, I just felt like I needed to – I just needed to say yes to everything and I guess it paid off. So. I think it definitely helps you become a better DJ, like not necessarily Christmas carols, yeah. but if you're playing all these other genres, you mm-hmm. know what works the crowd and what not. Yeah. It's such a and, you, and you start to figure out, like exploring so much music, you start to figure out what you really love yeah. and like what works for you. And, um, yeah, I feel like – I feel lucky that I've – because a lot of people contact me and, like, how would you find your sound, mm. what should I do, this, that, and it's just from going through so much music and playing so many gigs that it just kind of comes together. So, yeah, I'm really thankful that I've – I feel like I really know what my sound is now. Like, it's just locked in. So when did you sort of start to think that you hadn't that, had that lockdown? Like, was that sort of a few years or did you sort of get to the techno side of things pretty quickly? Um. I reckon 2019 was like the year that it kind of all locked in and like fell into place for me because I um I played the Babylon closing set, which was like a pinnacle moment for me in terms of I guess like really good content and like a really big crowd and that kind of what I gained a lot of popularity from that. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the they used to have a doof here called Babylon Festival. I think I've seen videos yeah. of it. Yeah, so this is pre COVID. Um, and I played that that song by Sunset Brothers that oh, I'm feeling man. it. Yeah, oh, man. that song is like the sound of Sydney. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, because they're Sydney so, boys. Yeah. So Shout proper. out to Sunset Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sunset Brothers is everything in Sydney. Yeah. It does go off. By oh, that, that track yeah. is just timeless. Like I actually met them um, on the Festival X tour. Oh, True. Yeah. And um, I just would not shut up about that track. They're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone talks about that track. But they, they love it. It's just such... I feel good. It just really hits you in the feels. It's so good. So you mentioned you do a bit of singing as well. You're still doing it. Do you incorporate that into your workflow of producing or Um, do you just sort of do it on the side? Not really. Like I've done a few vocals for like other artists and collabed and that kind of thing. Um, But the track I was just saying that I was making on the plane on the way here, um, I have all these vocals recorded when I used to study music performance in like 2015. And so I, I was like, didn't really know what to ever do with them, but I ended up just cutting them all up. Chopping and, them up. And, yeah. yeah that's so cool. I can't see myself recording new vocals anytime soon just because, well, maybe, but I just feel like it's not the crux of like the track that you, when you're making a techno track. It's more like the, the, the vocals are more like the little added bits. Yeah, so I guess I would be trying to focus on getting the, you know, the drums and mm. the bass and the kick and everything. And by that point, I just, yeah, I don't know, like my vocals I feel like are really like pretty and feminine and the sound that I like is just not really like that. (laughs) You're feminine. (laughs) (laughs) But in saying that, um, chopping up the vocals and things today, I'm like, oh, okay, this actually works. So I think I'll just do the odd track that has vocals and then, yeah, some that I won't and just see. See see Never say never, like you just never know. Yeah. So you mentioned 2019, you played at the Babylon Festival. Yeah. That was a pretty monumental moment. Yep. Obviously later that year, COVID happened. Mm. What was COVID like for you as an artist, especially that was sort of when you, would you say you were really breaking through? Yeah. What was that like dealing with that? Um, it was really just like really disappointing um, mm. because yeah, I felt like I'd worked so hard to get to that point and then it was just all kind of just taken away. And I didn't know, like, there's just those fears of, like, am I going to be remembered? Like, am I going to have to start again? Is there any point going back to it? Like, am I going to have any gigs? Just all these thoughts. Um, and, yeah, it was 
pretty depressing. Yeah. I was trying to work another job, like tried to do some online course, hated it, didn't quit that, stopped doing that. Just I ended up building a veggie garden in my backyard <laughs> and like fully went crazy. I was just like out in the garden, like harvesting potatoes. What were you growing? I, I did it. I grew a potato crop. <laughs> I actually lost my shit. Are they still going? Uh, it's at, it was at a rental. So oh, it's okay. just, so. yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Have you potatoes? <laughs> Were you full time at that point? Um, I was. I, I so I was working full time at Cotton On Head Office, which I had for like the last five years pre two thousand nineteen, um, and DJing at the same time. So working Monday to Friday, DJing like two to three gigs on the weekend, um, and then yeah, I quit after I played um, Picnic Electronic. And I it was the Nina Kravis show, and I played like a couple of sets before Nina. And it went so well and, like, it was just uh, – I don't know if you guys remember that one, but there was another, like, really big video that went viral. It was that insane song by um, is it Steve Monks. Um, is that the one on your Insta? It's on my Insta. How does it go? Um, Want to hear the vocals? <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's like, I don't want to be alone, Nami. No. Can't say, no, but you do have a very good voice. <laughs> I can see why you're <laughs> Um, So, yeah, I feel like that was just such a good show and it, it went so well. I was like, fuck it, I'm quitting So I just quit my job. How was that quitting? Um, I mean, it wasn't going very well in the end. Like mm. I was really not focused and I was just like music, music, music. Yeah. Like I had two screens that I was working from doing like um, admin type stuff mm -hmm. um, and I had like one screen was – SoundCloud, the other screen was my work. I was just like, didn't <laughs> yeah, give a shit at yes. that point. I was like, okay, it's probably time for me to go. Um, so, yeah, so I quit that and everything was going really well. And, of course, everyone was like, oh, I shouldn't quit your day job. Mm. It um, must have been a scary time for you as well. Like, obviously, yeah. you're starting to pop off, but the un unknown of yeah, what if. I've never really been scared of the unknown. That's good. I feel like, I feel obviously it's like a privileged thing where I feel like I could you know, fall back on my family. If I was in heaps of trouble, you know, mm -hmm. I know that that would always help me. So I guess I have that privilege of like feeling safe in being able to follow yeah. my dreams. Is your oh, is all your family in and around Melbourne or? Um, Winchelsea or Geelong area. Yeah. What's that like? An, how far away is that? Hour and a half? Um, from, Ge from Melbourne. Yeah. So Geelong's about, yeah, about an hour and a half and then Winchelsea is probably like two hours. Yeah. Whereas yeah. it makes you work harder as well because you know you have to make it work. Exactly right. There's no the second up. Well, like you said, you can fall back, but you don't yeah. want to do that. So and I felt like I was pretty young. I was like, just take a risk, you know. Mm. Do something you want I've to. I've always like had that self-belief um, probably from my dad because he's always just been like, you can do whatever you want. Like, you know, you know, you, if you want to do this, you, like he's always encouraged me to follow my dreams. So I guess I've just been built on that kind of self-belief that I can do whatever I want. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Paying off for you anyway. Yeah, it's going good. I didn't think, like, yeah, obviously with COVID, I was like, shit, what am I doing with my life? Like, I don't, you know, haven't studied anything. It's funny, like, I've heard a few DJs in different interviews and things talk about that COVID time where they mm. were thinking, like, you know, is any, if I, everyone going to remember me when I come back? Mm. But, like, all the punters out there are just sitting there like, fuck, I need a rave. Like, yeah. I need a gig. Like, so yeah, true. Especially the boom after COVID, everyone's going out. Yeah. So was, yeah, that was a hectic time. It was just, yeah, I just didn't, really had no idea what to expect. But, yeah, people were reassuring, like, oh, it'll go back, like, it'll be fine. Melbourne especially because you guys copped it. Oh, no, yeah. Was it the longest ever lockdown. It like, was so. The longest lockdown city in the world. Yeah. Oh, really? Probably yeah, apart so. China maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, true. I think yeah. they're still going on it. <laughs> yeah. They're... Yeah, I think they're, like, starting to, like, wean it out. Slowly, but because um, of all the protesting and stuff, but mm. yeah, it's so bad. What was that first gig back like? Oh boring. my god, terrifying! Oh, really? I was terrified, like because I was just in my house for like mm. six months, literally just in my own thoughts, like like lost all my confidence. Just True. I was just so so fragile. So I'd have to take a friend with me. Like I had to have like half Valium before I play, which I still do oh. sometimes if it's a big gig. But I was freaking out. I was like, oh, everyone's looking at me. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> lost it. Yeah, what and then yeah, was that? which well, one was the first one back? I think my first one back was, um, it was in this like Skyrise building in the city. It's called um, Cocktails and Techno. Oh, that's a fucking good name. Yeah, <laughs> Cocktails and Techno. <laughs> which and it was like a pretty small like gig, but even that, I was so scared. I think I actually couldn't finish the gig. I think I stopped. Oh, because I was fully freaking out. Like oh, really? I felt so anxious and sick. And wow, yeah, shit. it was awful. Yeah, you usually find you like if a lot of people are nervous. 
um, before a gig mm. after a couple of tracks they're sweet but mm. that's interesting that you say even mm. you weren't able to get through the whole well I just was not my head wasn't in it like I wasn't you know I wasn't playing any gigs I had just kind of stopped I wasn't hanging out with anyone like in this in the music scene social anxiety probably yeah I was mm. just like kind of forgot about that whole life I just didn't feel involved at all so it just felt like really um, strange to me to just be going straight back into it um, but yeah I I knew I had to stick it out. So for like three, yeah. four gigs in, I was like, okay, feeling better now. Yeah. Do you do anything to manage that these days or is it just now that you're on a roll you feel like you're – All I know is that um, – all I know is that I just trust myself now that like even if I'm nervous or I'm freaking out, I know that once I'm up there I will manage and I'll be fine and it always – I always am. Yeah. So that's, that's the only thing that can help. You can't really – there's nothing really more I can do. Like I mean like what, meditate before I play? Like – I just, I'm not someone that. Yeah, not would, for you. I, yeah. I like meditating, but not before I play. Yeah. yeah. I think so many people don't realize as well, like, even though you feel nervous to all the punting and stuff, like, you're going mad up there and they don't realize. Yeah. So sometimes it is just stick it out. And, exactly right. And after the gig, you'll be like, fuck it. I think it's really it's like an exposure thing. Like, you just have to keep, get, used to, get used to it again, and then your brain starts to feel safe in that space. And then it just, yeah. Yeah, it is pretty anxious when you're up there and everyone's looking at you and yeah, screaming. Yeah. Or, so it's a lot, lot more yeah. intense for you than it's for our gigs. But yeah, <laughs> like I imagine like you're playing big shows like Pitch, Beyond the Valley. Yeah, you, yeah. You get up on the stage and there's like thousands of people Because you think there. like, oh, am I going to – like what if I forget how to DJ? I don't know. <laughs> 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 but I wouldn't, but you just get those crazy thoughts. Yeah. Hit a Q button by accident or play oh, the I've done track. that before. <laughs> it happens, it happens to everyone. It does happen. Yeah. I remember <laughs> I did it at Picnic Electronics. So it was like a big show and the whole set was being like live um, <sighs> recorded yeah. video as well, like live onto social media. Mm. Mm. Anyway, I, I accidentally pressed pause um, on the track that was playing, so it just went started going like, and then I just like, I acted like someone did something, like I acted like someone else under the bus. I was like, I was like, oh, what? Like, oh, so Who weird. Did that? <laughs> What's the sound guy doing? <laughs> I was like. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fucking amazing. That's like, a good copy. That's a good way out of it. Have yeah. you seen that? I don't, didn't know how else to like recover from it. <laughs> You've probably seen it, but that Fred again, Boy the Room set, that oh, guy haven't. that keeps hitting the Q button. Q button. No, yeah, I have was, not seen that. Yeah, it happened like two or three times. This guy like up on stage with um, Fred again. Mm. And there was like two or three times where he's just like knocked the Q button and he's oh. like, whoa, like move out sort of thing. He played it off well, Fred again. Yeah, yeah. And they just went. Oh, well, he was pretty chilled about it. Yeah, he was, and that was – was that the boiler room set that popped him off? As yeah, well? I think yeah. they're mates now. Someone was telling me the other day oh, that he, he accepted some award and I think the bloke collected it on his phone. Really? Yeah, yeah. they're good mates now. <laughs> I love that. What a story. <laughs> That's man. amazing. I do need to see that video, but – Yeah, God, okay. <laughs> That's hectic. I'll pull it up for you one day maybe. You, um, <laughs> you mentioned Nina Kravitz before on a scene in an interview online um, that she's one of your like sort of inspirations. Definitely. What? Because you've supported her a few times. Yeah. What, what's that like? I've supported her. Like, yeah, quite a few times but haven't spoken to her. Oh, <laughs> like I've had like small chats like, hi, how are you? Yeah. Like she's really nice but I'm just so nervous around can, her. Sh- can she speak English? Do you know? Yeah. Yep, she can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was really – we saw her at she was, so she was She's the best. Very, yeah. Very she was insane. I knew she was like mad before we seen her. Like I was actually really excited to see her. Yeah. The tune she was pulling out. Oh, uh, all her tracks like that are all now released, she's managed to just get like every artist – you know, that released on her label or, or within that kind of same sound. Mm. So then she just plays all the tracks on her label. Yeah, she's... It's like it's such a different... It's it's obviously almost. techno, but it like touches on like trance. Psy and trance it's, almost. But it's like something even different. It's just like contemporary, I don't know, it's really bassy, unique. vocal, like quirky. It's so yeah. good. We do have to apologise. We didn't get to see you that day because Brody was in Dance Wise. Mm. Had too much to drink. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's... The old yeah. medical tent trip again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. But yeah. they looked after me real well. They gave me a shout, well, shout out well, Dance Wise. Shout out Kate from Dance Wise. <laughs> um, they literally gave me, like I drank my whole body weight in Staminade. <laughs> gave me fairy bread, chocolate chip cookies. Fairy bread, really? Yeah, everything. Yeah. everything in there. Yeah, they're well, well equipped. Nurse, for, nurse cool. me back to health. Yeah. <laughs> 
And he actually, to be fair, he did make it back in as well. Full recovery. In. Really? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Never yeah. before seen. I'd like to go check that turn out next yeah. time. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> recommend it to anyone watching. Yeah. Like the artist room. It's good with the food there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no fairy bread in the artist room. Go to dance uh, wise. Like, oh, on. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> put that on your ride. It's some fairy bread. That stage True. was cool that day, actually. Mm. The um, one that you yeah, the, like the little Coliseum kind yeah. of yeah. thing. It's so cool. We were camped there the whole day. Like, oh, I loved like, it. Yeah, that, I reckon the Sydney show was Pretty, like, yeah, I was up there with it. Was I reckon my favorite show in terms of the venue? You did yeah. a couple of the festival acts, I did all of them. All of them. Wow, yeah. how was that? It was really cool, yeah, yeah it was good. It would been a hectic little schedule there, or um, wasn't too bad. Yeah, so the, apart? the first weekend was Melbourne Gold Coast, mm -hmm. and then the second weekend was Sydney into Adelaide into Perth. What was that experience? Was it Adelaide, Sydney, Perth? Adelaide, um, Sydney, yeah, Adelaide, Sydney, Perth, was it? I yeah, think so. Um, I'll have to fact check that one after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a betting man. I'd say Adelaide Sydney first. Okay. We go back and forth then. But yeah, you're not very good. Fucking Doesn't make one. sense. No. Nah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's irrelevant. Yeah. So what, what, what was that little tour like? Yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, I met so many amazing people. I really got to know a lot of the artists. Um, and, yeah, it was fun. I mean, I had a bit of an earlier slot, so that was a little bit tricky with the style of music that I play um so I ended up playing like a little bit kind of um a bit more different to what I usually play which was kind of cool though because I had like a lot of um local um Aussies send in all their tracks that awesome. and I tried to kind of play you know because most people I guess making techno I feel like make anything from like 128 to 135 like I reckon that's the more standard. the standard which is not really what I play I like to play like 145 plus um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. I got to play like a lot of tracks, and it was a bit different, a bit more like not as intense. It's a bit more like chilled. So it was cool. Bit of a shake up, bit different. Yeah, it's a good experience. But like yeah. how how we were saying earlier, playing all those different genres, it just makes you a better DJ. Definitely you pull them out of your locker. Yeah. 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 I saw um, Michael Beebe an article once with him. He for, he got a residency at this club, and the shift was from like 5 a.m. to 12 a.m. every Sunday. Oh, my gosh. But every week it was a different party. So like one week it would be EDM, one week house, one week techno. Really? And he said like that's where I learned how to properly DJ True. because playing different sounds and different people and seeing what yeah. people like and that kind of thing. Definitely. That would be tough shift, uh, seven yeah. hours, but different genres, yeah. like having enough music to progress through for that long. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like I've got so much music. Like I, I enjoy playing house sets as well, like house, minimal house, like party, party tracks kind of thing. So, like, if I'm ever playing at a friend's party or whatever, I'll usually play that kind of thing. Or I played at Revs recently for my birthday. It was a three-hour set. It fun. It was so fun. Yeah. Um, in the cage and obviously you can't play, you don't play techno, there. like you don't play fast techno there. Um, so I just played all old party tracks, like played Flaunt It. <laughs> oh, that's a tune. <laughs> that's such that a track. Off. I know, it goes off. Um, so, yeah, I love doing all of that. And I feel like people know me for my techno, but they also know that, like, I like to mix it up a little it bit. diverse. Yeah, it can be a bit diverse, which is good. I think it is good. Like, we've spoken about recently as well. Um, so I went to – we've been to Europe 2019, but I went mm -hmm. again last year and, like, yeah. different festivals. So, like, say I'd see Dennis Soltoff, for example. He played at 3 p.m. and he played like a housey disco set mm -hmm. and then I saw him play again at 4 a.m. Yeah. like a different place and yeah. it was, like, harder techno. Yeah. It's like yeah. having that I love diversity. that, like – so nice not being like boxed into a certain genre so you know you, you play all these different sets and people start to, to book you you know purely just for that yeah but it, but it's nice to be booked for other other sounds as well like obviously solely techno is my thing but yeah it's nice that they know that people do know that yeah you're up for anything kind of yeah do you enjoy playing the longer gigs like those three hour sets yeah. how do you find them i love it yeah get to go through the gears yeah i feel like it takes me an hour to settle in yeah. Really, just yeah. to like really yeah. get my groove and just feel relaxed. And um, whereas, yeah, most sets these days are probably like an hour and a half. Like that's just standard. So mm -hmm. my last half hour is always my best. Going ham. Yeah. Talk just forever. I just feel like really relaxed and like mixing heaps of stuff like differently and just like feeling more confident. Let yourself go a bit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How do you usually prepare for a set? What do you do? Um, so usually like the way I find all my music, this is just stuff like exploring so many artists and labels. But now I've got it narrowed down to um so just band camp and i'm just signed up to like mailing lists of all the artists and labels That's that i that i love yeah 
And yeah, it seems to be enough now that that's, I don't really have to search for it as such. I just mm. get an email when they release something and then there's enough there for me to kind of put together a set. So you're adding a few new tracks a week? Yeah. The box. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you play that um, 6 a.m. ab workout. Oh, track. gosh. Six minute work, ab workout. Six minute ab workout. Yeah. That song, I'm, I feel like bad now because I feel like it's just been rinsed it's, and yeah, now I'm over it. But it's such a tune. It's such a tune. Where did you find that? So it's a funny story, actually. So um, one of my best friends was at Bergein, mm. the club in Berlin. Infamous old place, that is. Yeah. The old Bergein. Um, and I'd never heard that track, but she was there and she shazammed it. Or like sent me like a Snapchat or like obviously it's all dark. Shazam and They'd be onto it straight away. <laughs> <saying that. laughs> well, yeah, up. she must have been doing it um, secretly. But, yeah, so she Shazammed it, sent it to me and that was the first time I heard it. Um, and I just like fell in love with it. Banging so. it in sets now, hey? Yeah. yeah. So, but it's like a shame that I never got to hear it on a dance floor first. Yeah. 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 Goes off, let's take that. You played it, <laughs> the Valley, and I was like, fuck it, oh, it's this track. Yeah, yeah. it's and then so I was good. Messaging my mate last week, and I was like, fuck, that was a sick track. And then um, Sean sent it in on yeah. the other day, and I was like, oh, that's what it was that's, called. Yeah. I thought it was unreleased for sure. No. So, well, like when I first started playing it, I mean, a few people have been playing it now, like it's getting around. Mm. There wasn't even like the the artist who made that track. His name's Marco East, and you know he's I would say he's like a probably like an emerging. He's probably been DJing and producing for a long time, but he hasn't got like a massive following. And he's just like whipped oh, out sorry. this like mm. crazy track, and everyone's just tagging him in it, and he's getting so much love yeah. for it. So yeah, that that side of it, even though it's being rinsed, and I feel like I'm sick of it now. <laughs> nah, just at keep least playing it, <laughs> I'll play it for a bit long, bit more longer. <laughs> Do the public a service. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it's the, just such a. Yeah, it's such a party track. Yeah, the video of you playing that up beyond the valley was something else. Yeah. <laughs> you, had, you had some good moves up on stage as well. What's that? You had some good moves up on stage uh, yeah. as well. Yeah. You're practicing them in <laughs> Look, the mirror at home. I actually don't. I don't actually know where that's come from. Like I never used to do that. But you just suddenly I, I used to just tap my like my right leg, like constant tapping. And now I've just somehow whipped out these like, like weird shuffle, shuffle yeah. moves. Keep, keep going with it. It's unique. It's I think good. my dance moves just like evolve because I love dancing. Like mm. I love it. Gymnast, a vocalist, dancer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do it all. So round up. Yeah. <laughs> so how many tracks have you got? Uh, I think we touched on before you have a track coming out when, as of this, when it's recorded on Tuesday. Yeah. So the 17th. Um, how many of the tracks do you have? Like are you working on a fair bit or is the plan to just release that one? And um, so... I've released a few remixes in the past. This track that I'm releasing is like the first original track that I am like willing to release. It's <laughs> yeah. like up to scratch. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. Um, and yeah, and then the plan is just to keep making tracks as much as I can and just release, you know, maybe just put some stuff up on my band camp slash, you know, approach some different labels, whatever I feel like, the, wherever I feel like that track will suit. Um, but yeah, I just want to make stuff, finish it, get it up kind of thing just smash it out so this new track that you're about to release your first original track mm-hmm. how long have you been working on that for i reckon i worked on that for three months yeah yeah and the fact that there was a deadline with the label was probably the only way that I actually <laughs> finished forced, it. To get it done. forced me yeah. to get it done fuck it get better get because that first here. original track it's so daunting i'm like oh. of course rip the band-aid off yeah, yeah but yeah the band-aid's off now so i know that i can do it i know i'm capable even though I don't think it's the best track, but it's my first one, so oh, it's just yeah. it does. All, it goes all right. I'll give it a seven, six point eight out of ten. <laughs> I'm sure the public love it. <laughs> and then so you're on Ableton. Yeah. yeah. Ableton. And then how have you been learning? Have you been online? Um, I've tried so many different things. Like, I actually studied um, music production, electronic music production before I was DJing. So like when I was like 22, okay. I did a course, which I wasn't really listening. Like I really find it hard to. So to listen and to other people teaching me things. Um, I don't know if I've got some kind of learning deficit, not sure. I think I got the same. <laughs> the attention we, spans horrible, yeah. mine's terrible. So now I kind of, when I would need to know something in particular, I just like will ask a friend or I'll YouTube it or I'll go see someone to get them to help me. Um, but I just honestly think that it's all just fallen into place now just based on that I've been doing it and trying to do it for so many years, like, I guess almost 10, uh, probably almost 10 years I've been trying to like learn and just do little bits here and there and naturally it's just that that amount of 
it is hard. Like, so I think it's like for me anyway, I have to be really consistent with it. And you mm, do see like. So true. You have to do it every day. Yeah. Put that repetition. The first if two, not every second. Yeah, exactly. Anytime you can really just make sure you're being mm. consistent. Like the first year I did, I'm like almost three years in now. But mm-hmm. the first year I was like real. And I feel like I'm got really de- pretty decent at like sound design and stuff like that. Nice. But then I went away from it for a bit. Yeah. And now I'm like, fuck, I'm. I'm not unlearned it, but I've forgotten Your skills to, are pretty good, mate. It's all right. I've forgotten how to do a lot of the stuff that I could do before. Yeah, so yeah. now I'm trying to get back into being more consistent like day to day with yeah. everything. And you just have like, to because the better you get, the more you want to do it. Exactly. So that's that's just yeah. the key. You just have to get past that like not being good at something. Like I hate I hate not being good at something. Like I want to just be good be the best straight it. away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dancer, singer, DJ. Right. Producer, <laughs> producer. What can't you do? <laughs> Uh, so is your aim to uh, keep producing techno or do you want to delve yeah. into some other sort of genres? Um, no, I definitely want to – That I want that to be my main goal. Um, I do enjoy – when I first started producing electronic music, it was like down tempo, broken beat, ambient, like vocals, like really pretty stuff. So I feel like that's probably more of like a hobby for me. Um, so, yeah, all my time is going to go into making techno um, but, you know, once I've kind of nailed that, then, you know, maybe I'll bring out a random – track of whatever is, just comes out of me in that moment. But at this point I feel like it's not a waste of time but I definitely need to focus on that kind of end goal. Yeah. What yeah. kind of sounds would you say that you like with producing that kind of thing? Like where would you say your sound sort of gravitated to or do you think you have a range of what you make? Um, Like what kind of – like what style of – Yeah, like, you know, like, do you like acidy stuff or do you um, like – I love just – I love like really stripped back, like real bassy, just like kick bass and then um, kind of – I like really glitchy, almost like trancey, psy trancey kind of sounds as like effects. Um, and then I definitely like a vocal. Like I, I enjoy female vocals in techno, but then I also like like a real sneaky, like weird, like this, the track that I'm just bringing out, Our Sun is a Star, the vocal in that I found on YouTube, it's from an old university lecture of him talking about astrology. Good sample. That's sick. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, it's like Our Sun is a Star um, and it goes into all the, how the sun revolves, like, I don't know, it goes oh, into... Sound mad at a festival. Yeah, 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 and it's, like, really monotone and he just, like, kind of talks about <laughs> space for a little bit and... Um, Did you just search, like, space, people talking about space? <laughs> I'd love to see your YouTube history, how you got to there. <laughs> I don't know how I found... I'm pretty sure because I think there's copyright issues and things with... True. But I think that's kind of... Um, that kind of clears, I think, 70 years after something's been made... That is oh, really? seventy years old. Seven. Well, yeah, it's it's old. Like oh. it's really old. Like I'm pretty sure it's black and white. Digging like, into the archives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well it's done. super old. But then I don't know because it's a talk and it's not a song. I'm not really sure how that works, but I will we'll soon find out. Yeah, you might be getting sued in a minute. It's <laughs> <laughs> been nicked. Yeah, it's Technically, funny. I'm just passing on like information. True. Yeah, I, I, I'm a problem. fan. <laughs> you, you sold me. It's funny, like you were just saying with the search history, like the rabbit yeah. hole you can go down. Oh, oh gosh, I, I know. Try to find a vocal uh, for a track. I just wanted someone talking about like rave culture and stuff. Mm. And I end up, I had to watch through this 15 minute interview with this guy talking about like from the UK, talking about back in the 90s. And they're not ripping it, but it's got all this stuff in the background uh, as well because of like it had music in the background. That's, yeah. the char- that's the character. Of but the yeah, I was, True, it can. I was sitting there and I was scrolling through these videos and they were just like the most random things. And I was thinking like, why the fuck am I doing this? <laughs> and then eventually I found that one and I was like, okay, yeah, yes. right, it wasn't a waste of time. Of Sometimes you just get stuck on like this one thing and it's been a whole day. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's but, the beauty I mean, of it. yeah. I guess when you've got the time, like now, I just, yeah. Searching. Uh, yeah, just so much searching, just like getting stuck into like obsessing over one certain thing. But, and it feels like it's a waste of time, but then what, obviously you're, like, you're learning in that and I, I guess it's, I guess you're benefiting from it in one way or another. How many hours a day would you say you're putting into production? What's, what's the, I suppose, what's the day look like for you? Um, so my day looks like on a good day when I'm, like, stuck in. <laughs> when I'm like not being lazy or I'm not like, you know, recovering from the weekend. Um, so on an ideal day, my plan is I get up like 6.30, I go to the gym and then I like to make music in the morning because I just feel like my brain's clear and I feel creative and I feel like heaps of energy and I'm like ready to go. So yeah, then I'll usually sit down and I'll make music anywhere from like sometimes a couple of hours, but sometimes I'll make music up till lunchtime, have a break and then keep making it. Um 
but then it's like a lot of admin stuff involved. Like, you know, I've got to, I do all my own social, like social media content, everything. Like I have a manager, but I'm also like across everything. Like I'd like to be across involved, involved with everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing also a lot of that kind of thing. Um, invoicing, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I would say I like to spend like two to three hours minimum a day making music. There was a track you had on your story the other day. It was that Drake one. I think it had Drake. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's so, to go with that? So that's, um, yeah, that's one I've started. I'm definitely, I'm going to finish that one. I I've been, so. yeah, I will. Um, so it's, I love Drake. I'm obsessed. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I listen to hip hop like flat out during the week. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I don't really listen to techno. Like I'm obviously making it, so therefore I'm listening to it. But um, in terms of other artists, I'm, just hip hop, like or R and B, the whole week. Love it's it. So, so interesting. Yeah. There was another yeah, Drake opposite. track you played at BTV as well. Yeah, I played um, over two. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's a so there's this guy called DJ PayPal, and he does like every Drake <laughs> album that comes out, he does edits for the whole album. Oh, so wow. it's like a twenty track thing on Bandcamp, and you have to buy the whole thing. That's it. So there's two tracks that I liked. And I'm like, I need to buy that. So I bought the mm. whole thing anyway. Cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, well, it wasn't too bad. Music's so cheap. It's crazy how like how much time and effort goes into it. But then I guess when everyone buys it, it ends up adding it's up. Worthwhile. I think it was after Pitch last year when Will got that CD from Skin on Skin. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I think he released his album like the week <laughs> after or two weeks after and it was like 99 cents for the whole album or like. Ten bucks for one song. That's crazy. Oh, that was to oh. raise money. Though. Wait, what was it? No, no. Yeah, yeah. It was a hundred or a hundred bucks for one song, mm. or because he was raising money for something. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, on so Bandcamp. Gotcha. You know what the annoying ones are though? They're like when they got vinyl, uh, vinyl only. Or yeah, I literally bought a vinyl the other day to go and then rip onto Ableton. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I need to. I love this track. I need to play it, yeah. but I'm not ripping it off SoundCloud. Nah, it's sound rubbish. Yeah, I think if you love a record so much, then even if you don't mix vinyl, I feel like it's nice to have it in a hard copy. Because mm. then, yeah, because I've got the same. I've got a record player at home, and I just rip. Um, sorry, my headphones are falling off. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just rip them into. I haven't done many of them, but the ones that I like, I rip them into. Um, like yeah, into a digital form so I can play. Um, because I actually have a massive record collection. I have like 500 techno records. Oh, wow. Do you play vinyl? No, it? I don't play vinyl. Like I've tried to like mix them before at a friend's house and whatnot. A bit trickier, hey? It's way hard. I'd love to, but I just feel like it's a whole other thing to learn. Yes. I'd prefer to focus on production. But maybe one day because, yeah, like I said, I've got such a big collection of vinyls which are from um, my manager who is Richie McNeil um, who runs Hardware Music. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he's like a – one of the first kind of like for Australia, like he was like a big, played a big part in like the electronic Definitely. underground scene. Yeah, he's thrown some big events. Yeah. Yeah. Like he used to run Stereosonic, everything. I don't know if you guys are too young. Yeah. We're, we're, we're aware. Yeah, we missed it. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. as we yeah. became of age. Gotcha. Yeah. Same as Big Day, big day Out. Yeah. yeah, Big Day Out was one of my first festivals. Yeah. Saw the Prodigy. I was just like, whoa, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Future. I think we just missed Future as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, that was so fun. It was like full, full muzz. Yeah, <laughs> most culture. It was like the time it was like fluoro v necks and like. Yeah, the fashion back then, looking back on it now. It's, yeah, we'll it's, back it's, it's questionable. Very questionable. That's like we're saying, oh, I'm saying to my mates, you know, everyone down here wears the hats with the flowers. The oh, the bleached flowers. hats. Yeah. 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 hats. Yeah. yeah, apparently yeah. it's like some kind of like glitch in the matrix. I don't know, some <laughs> kind of like weird thing. Everyone's like being conformed and like wearing these. Ooh. Brainwashed with these like flesh yeah. hats. Little I mean, chips in them or something. <laughs> I bought one, so. <laughs> but I bought one from um, I think their name's pronounced Dusfag. They've got like a little Melbourne. I have to get your sponsorship. Yeah. I'll tag them in there. Well, I think that they're actually going to send me a custom one. So oh, I, they had a store set up at BTV, and I went and bought one off them, and they like did a little custom bleach like with my initials because they just like do it with paint, like a paint bleach mm. brush thing. Um, so yeah, I think they're really cool. But so the ones with the flowers on them, where? Did, they look like little SpongeBob. Where are flowers. they from? Because there's an American brand and then there's the Melbourne brand. I think it's Ocre. The brand's called okay. the Melbourne one. And uh, is it is that skin on skin person? I, I'm not really well versed with skin on skin and like Fred again, like all these like younger people coming <laughs> through. I don't. I don't know. I just started seeing it at pitch and then after pitch. They just yeah, it's yeah. even in Sydney. Now, I heard like, that yeah. skin on skin had something to do with the trend of it in Potentially. Australia. Possibly. You might have worn it. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, okay, it was Pop crazy at BTV, literally yeah. every single person. But yeah. I love them, but they're obviously just being overworn now and it'll just go. In that, um, I don't know if you're in the pitch track IDs page. No, I'm not. Someone, <clears throat> so it was after pitch and 
Someone made like a comp- uh, compilation of like all the Okre like <laughs> flower hats that they saw <laughs> and they got like 500 likes or something. Really? Yeah. I love that. My in Sydney now as well. Like if you go to Lost yeah. Sundays or any other more techno rave, they're mm. everywhere there Even as well. Lauren's got one. Oh. His girlfriend. She's, yeah, she's. Really? She's, she's joined she's the bandwagon. On the bandwagon. Yeah. She's on the bandwagon. Yeah. She's going to hate me if she sees this. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry in advance. She's like throwing a hat in the bin. Like, <laughs> can't right now. <laughs> so just on BTV. Wait, did we cover BTV? I can't remember if it was off camera not or not. Off camera. Yeah. Off camera. Yeah. yeah. How was that? It was so good. It was it was crazy. It was yeah, it was amazing. Had the best time. Loved it. I feel like the set went really well. Like I like it planned out I planned out the set pretty well beforehand. Didn't get to play all the tracks that I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I feel like it was because I recorded it and not very often will I be happy with the recording. I was listening to that the other day. That Still not 100% happy with it, thing. but, yeah, it's pretty good. No, that, that, was was good. <laughs> that was That was very good. Yeah. It's hard to say, like, after a festival, it's hard to say, like, what your favourite set of the weekend was, but that was definitely, like, up there for up me. Up there? Oh, that's nice. Party Boy was you. good, but that was different because, like, I didn't realise how talented he was. Like, he, yeah. he played the saxophone, piano, Is sang. he, like, playing guitar and stuff yeah, everything. as well? Like, like yourself, very well around. <laughs> yeah, well... Kind of, I just touch on everything. I wouldn't say I'm like a professional, but jack of all trades. There. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, your set was incredible that night. Thank Be- you. Before X Club as well, set the tone right. Yeah, I know that was yeah such a cool set. What's was... that like for you? Sorry, cut you off. That's what okay. was that like when you're up there and you're looking down? Like obviously Australian festivals, everyone's got doof sticks. Yeah, What's yeah, that like yeah. being like in your hometown? There's like thousands of people there with doof sticks in the air there to support you. It's I don't know. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I find myself just looking at like the front row. Like I had my parents there, so they were on the very oh, that's front. That's so awesome. Bar, and, like they were going off. So I was like looking at them a lot. And then all my closest friends were kind of in the front. And um, yeah, once it went past like the front kind of row, it was like really, really dark. So I couldn't really see how far the crowd went back or anything. Like, so I didn't really know how many people were there. Um, but yeah, it was really nice. I love it. It's the best feeling. Is that one of your biggest gigs you've played? Yeah, I reckon. Because you um, played overseas. I yes. played overseas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I played overseas, yeah. Um, just small, small club shows. Did you play at ADE? Yeah. So How I played at ADE for um, the APRA Australia Showcase. Yeah. Um, which was cool. Yeah, it was just like a small little club. and Still pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Playing yeah. in oh, yeah. Amsterdam. Still amazing, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you played in Berlin as well, haven't you? Yep, I played in Berlin at Club Ava, I think it's called. Um, that was a pretty good party. That was pretty busy. Yeah. The Germans love their techno as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you going hard there? I was going really hard. Yeah. yeah I was definitely fitting in over there. Because <laughs> I feel like when I first started playing that kind of heavier or like really fast, tribally, hard groove techno, um, it wasn't like mainstream here. Like I feel like techno, fast techno is like becoming mainstream. Definitely. Now. Whereas when I first started, it, it definitely wasn't. Um, so, yeah, when I was playing over there, it just felt like a lot more comfortable. But now I feel like I can play anything and everyone's everyone's up for it. 100%. Have, yeah. have you got any international tours planned? Um, so I'm going over to – so I'm going to Boom Festival. I'm not playing. Awesome. Just, just going just to – Just as a punter. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of renegades. I'll obviously bring my USBs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You never know when you might need it. Exactly right. Yeah. So I'll go to that, which is in Portugal. Then I'll um, hang out in Lagos for a little bit. Just Lagos like is cool. Wind down. Yeah, I've never been. My friend lives over there. So um, – Free accommodation. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm not sure what his living conditions are like. True. But, um, yeah, I'm sure it won't be too expensive. I'll Lagos is really nice, up. actually. It's got, like, lots lots of little bars and clubs and you can, like, bar hop. Nice. Yeah. I feel like nice. I won't be doing much bar hopping after Boom, but <laughs> I'll be doing more resting, like, kind yeah. of just regrouping, sitting, laying on the beach. You always say that and the next minute it's true. true. <laughs> I believe it when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I say that stuff all the yeah. time. I'm like, no, no. Like, I'm done. You're a rubber arm. Yeah, I'm such a rubber arm. <laughs> Sucker for a good time. Are you heading over with some mates? Um, yeah, so heading over with friends and then um, the plan is to go over to Germany on the 4th of August and I want to spend a full month, um, whether it's Germany, like Netherlands, maybe go over to the UK, um, wherever. The, I'm organising a little bit of a tour awesome. at the moment. So try and get that sorted and I'll just – I'll go wherever the gigs take me. <laughs> I'd love to go to Bergheim for my birthday, which is the 6th of August. So Hopefully you get in. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, I got let in the first time. Hopefully I'll get let in the second yeah, time. We didn't bother when we went. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, no. Yeah, we really wanted to, but I was like, if we wait four hours and then mm. don't get in, that would be gut-wrenching. Tragic. Yeah. I just went by myself and 
I feel like I that's that. Well, the, well, I met people there, but I lined mm. up by myself. So and it worked out really well. So maybe I'll just be like everyone. Go again. Leave I'll me see alone. You in I'll see you in you there. I'm riding you solo. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so no one can like cramp your style, and I don't know. Yeah, it seemed to work for me. So we um when we went to Berlin. Oh, not yeah. Sorry, when we went to Berlin, we went to Sissy Foss. Yeah. I think they told this story on the Billy Zane episode a couple of weeks ago. We did. Um, yeah, we went to Sissy Foss and we got to the front of the line and um, the security guard at the door, because I had like a button-up shirt on, he's like, oh, like undo some of your buttons. Button-up shirt? Yeah, it was like a old party shirt that I was wearing. That was a party shirt. I'm imagining like a suit shirt. Like nah, interesting. God, <laughs> nah, good no. Go nah, it was, a, um, it was like a party shirt gotcha. and then he was like, oh, like undo some buttons. He was like, oh, are you here to party? I am. <laughs> Obviously. You bet, you yes, bet I am. for a haircut. <laughs> German lad. Yeah. A little bit scary. Really? That's so funny. It's just like freshening up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Maybe you're looking a bit rugged and he's like, <laughs> saying if you're that cane or not. Lay yeah, in. I don't know. It was, it was weird. It's a whole different culture over there, but. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the Germans are proper ravers. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. De- it's a fully entwined in their culture. Mm. Yeah. They just like, as much as like live music is here, it's like, it's, you know, electronic music is for them. Yeah. It's just hard. I like how they pr- try and preserve the scene. Like, definitely. Obviously, mm. it's pain in the ass for people like us trying to get into their clubs, but the yeah. fact that they try and keep it and no phones and that kind definitely. of thing, I think it's really cool. Yeah. I definitely appreciate it for sure. There are a few, oh, not a few, but there's uh, probably, oh, no, there are a couple of venues in Sydney that are trying to sort of keep that. Yeah. Vibe, yeah, like Club 77. Club 77, yeah, I've, I followed them on Instagram, never played there, but it looks really They're cool. They're quite a techno club, aren't they? It would be a good place for we So out. Club 77 is the name of the club? Yeah. yeah. And then different crews run parties Yeah, different, there. yeah. Gotcha. They yeah. do every night, I'm pretty sure, seven so days a week. Four or five a.m., which is for Sydney, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of venues close like early in Sydney. Definitely, and, like yeah. three o'clock is usually like the cutoff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for most clubs. We're just, when we're talking to Mike Toner, when we recorded with him, um, he was saying that, well, he said that there was obviously Boogs does the three hour set mm-hmm. at Revs every week. And yeah. he was saying that, um, you know, 6 a.m., all the everyone just flocks to Revs afterwards. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. From all the different clubs. Yeah. And I was like, all the different clubs. Like, we flat out having one club that's open at 6 a.m. Yeah. in Sydney. We've got all the different ones going going to 6 a.m. It's only I mean, Sash, isn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think Sash is just really the main one who go. So they go to what time? So on an average, like on a just a normal night, I think it's four. And then on public holidays, mm-hmm. they'll like they'll they do their day event from two to ten, and then the like night event goes from ten to twelve midday. Oh, I love yeah, that! Yeah, and the culture there and like the atmosphere is yeah. really good. Everyone's just there to rave. And they have that at home, that home venue. Uh, yeah, yeah, the public holidays, yeah, yep. are at um, home bar. Yeah, nice. Um, and I'm excited then, to play there. Are you playing there That's where Flair is. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah, Home Bar is an awesome venue. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in the main room or the terrace? I don't know. I'm hoping it's the terrace. I really want to play terrace in the glass. Really it's like all the glass yeah. four-point system. Yeah. 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 The terrace is a really cool room. That's pretty Hopefully. iconic in Sydney. It's pretty funny because when you go to Sash Breakfast, like it'll be – 9, 10, 8, or even like 6, 7 a.m. Yeah. And because of the glass and it's out at Darling Harbour, you can uh, see all the morning joggers. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> can they see you? Yeah. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was one year. It was a, it was a Queen's birthday or something. It was a dress up. And then we dressed up and we're leaving at like 8, 9 a.m. I mean, I think I was in the ban- like a banana suit or something. I was in something <laughs> really, really stupid. It might have been a Teletubby suit. Oh, walking, I love that. We're walking to the, the craziest Uber looks. and there's people – uh, pushing their trams and stuff. Oh, uh, prams oh trams. no. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's never a good feeling, but you just got to embrace it. I mean, I'm sure they've partied before. Yeah. I got to show you this video. There was, I think it might have been 2021. 20, What's the one in April? Was it cassette? It was, nah, it was the Easter one. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I can't remember what time I left there, but I'm walking through Darling Harbour. I'm just trying to find this video. I'm so sorry. Um, Walking through Darling Harbour and there's these like, Groups of like people doing Tai Chi. Oh gosh! And it's all just like it's just trying to be re- real, healthy and relaxed. Yeah, right? it's just all this like relaxing. <laughs> I can't find it. I'll show oh, you after. It's like the sanctuary video. at BTV. <laughs> oh, no. I'll put a video on. It's just it's it's like, horrors. Um, horrors. It's horrors. <laughs> Scary. The tent at that pitch, and they've got like they come around. They give you little tea and stuff. Did you say that? Um, green house. Like the greenhouse. It was. Called. I must have made it in there. <laughs> Too busy partying. I wasn't doing much relaxing at pitch, yeah. I was going hard. Going hard. Yeah, you yeah. go in and it's like like beds, not beds, but it's like sand or whatever is on the floor oh, and then they, okay. they give you like a cup of tea and just tea to relax a bit. Oh, that's nice. Special brew. 
Yeah. yeah like sometimes it. you need that, but I'm just so, like, especially after I play, like, the energy and adrenaline I have, I'm just, just like. Keep going. Just keep going, yeah. Mm. Right, I think that just about wraps it up. We're probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty close. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. It's thank been you a pleasure for having, having me. You. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to chat to you. Yeah, really yeah. nice. See you at Flair on the weekend. Yeah, are yes. you guys going to come? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll pop down. Yeah, Amazing. We'll pop down for sure. <laughs> You can dance, dance to the beat, dance to the beat, dance to the beat, beat, you can dance to the beat.